Hello, and welcome to the Pacific Northwest Showdown Podcast. We're your hosts, Michaela and Kate. We are super excited to welcome some Seattle Seawolves rugby players, center Dan Creel and fly half AJ Alatimu as our special guests on this podcast episode. So thank you so much for joining us here on the Pacific Northwest Showdown. Thank yeah. you, Kate and Michaela, for having us. Um, awesome to be on your show. And yeah, I look forward to the next hour or so with you guys. Yes. Yeah. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have lots of banter. <laughs> We're going to learn about rugby. We're going to uh, learn about you guys a little bit, just so the fans and those people that show up to the matches yeah. get to know more about who you guys is, are as people as well. So it's going to be fun. Yeah. All right. And and the bar has been set that it's going to be fun. So it here we go. And now it has to be because we've already said it has to be. So should have got a six pack of beers yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, whatever. No. Whatever works. Yeah. Um. Well, to start off with, we love asking our guests. What is your favorite thing about living in the Pacific Northwest? And either of you can go first, whoever wants to. Okay. Go first. Oh, I'll go. There you go. Um, I've, got, I've got two little kitties. We've only been here for my wife and myself and our two kids. We've been here for about 10 months now. Um, and we've just found it extremely beautiful. I mean, you've got the oceans, the mountains. Uh, it's green all year round. Um, and we've just found the people to be extremely friendly. Um yeah, and I mean, I think especially coming from South Africa, we really enjoyed that, you know, you, you get to experience all four seasons of the year, which is pretty special. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, so snow this year has been the first time for our kids, which is which has been a really, you know, good memory. So, yeah, it's just a beautiful place to live. That's great. What about you, AJ? Yeah, well, I, I came over by myself in mm. 2020. In 2020, I came over by myself in... First day there, you know, it was a big shock. You know, I've never been to the America and you've seen it on the movies and TV. So yeah. It was a pretty big shock, you know, for myself. But um now Seattle was really nice. Uh, I even told my wife and because I got a little one as well and I told them that they would enjoy it. So when they came over in the last year, they yeah, my wife enjoyed it. Just real um I mean real chilled, not as busy. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. you know, nice places to go to, and like I, I don't like the the seawater, but I like the lake. So that was a big mm. bonus. Mm. They don't like getting seawater on me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> why we love it. <laughs> Nothing. We were well. Kate wasn't born technically in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, no, it's not I was. It's, I've kind of been up this way for my entire life. So mm -hmm. um, I like to hear about other people's experiences in other places. But I also like the perspective that people have of the Pacific Northwest who didn't necessarily grow up here, because you kind of start taking things for granted. When like I had a view of Mount Rainier my entire life from where I lived, and so you take those kinds of things for granted. Yeah. Um, so I like your guys' perspectives as well. So here's a question that I love to ask. <laughs> what are hidden hobbies or talents that you have that not many people know about? Sure. Jay, yours is probably golf, eh? <laughs> yeah, play a bit of golf. <laughs> Something uh, probably no one knows is that uh, uh, I'm a drummer. I can play the drums. You're a drummer? Mm, I okay. I in the church band growing up, so I uh, love playing drums, um, and I also like cutting hair. So, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've, got, I've got a few cuts from, from AJ, he's the team barber, which is pretty <laughs> cool, and he does, a really, he does a really good job. Well, there you go. That's, that's awesome. Some high praise right there, the team barber. Yeah. You got to trust somebody with some needs clippers. One, yeah, there. Needs one, yeah. Needs one, yeah. <laughs> you guys better move up. <laughs> AJ, you gotta take care of your boy. <laughs> yeah, when I'm when I'm when I'm back in town, I'll look after the boys. All right, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. awesome. Dan, what about you? Um, I've got a really keen interest on farming. Um, come from a farming background in South Africa. Um, you know, we had a sugar cane and poultry farm there, and yeah, I'm really hoping that you know we want to live in we want to live in the states, my family and I. And we're hoping that one day we could have our own farm farm out here somewhere. And yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a big dream, but uh, you know we just got to work towards it and see what happens. I bet you're gonna make it happen. It's gonna yeah, happen. That's yeah, it's gonna happen. We we yeah. you know we've just loved every moment of the states. Uh, you know, being in the last ten month ten months, um, 
and you know, like you said, uh, Michaela, you know, you take things for granted. And I think living in South Africa, it's a third world country. It's absolutely beautiful, but you know, things in America just work, and mm-hmm. it's, mm. uh, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place, which we we're extremely grateful for. Wow. I also yeah. like to hear that perspective too, because again, living in America, people can also take for granted and, and the freedoms that we have and what we have access to. And yeah. Um, so I appreciate you providing that perspective too. No yeah. It's refreshing. Yeah. So I, both of you have mentioned that you're both dads. So mm-hmm. what do you like most about being a dad? Well, I think everything it's, I mean, it's a full-time job. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my kids are actually my daughter and my son. Um, the daughter's name is Summer, and my son's name is Cruz. Um, so their birthdays this weekend on Saturday, the 17th of December. Both of their birthdays are born on the same day. Oh my wow. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so Cruz is turning four and Summer's turning six. Wow. Um, but it's just super, know, super special, you know. It, it sort of forces you to take a step back in life and enjoy the small things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's the greatest gift, greatest blessing, you know, that, that any person could have. So I love it. Love everything. Good times, bad times, sick kids, not sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I'm the same as Dan. Wow. It's pretty, pretty buzzing, you know, just uh, growing up, I, have a lot, I had a lot of mates, you know, with kids and, you know, I always told myself, like, I wonder what it would be like to have a kid, you know, and then obviously when the wife gave birth, even watching that was pretty, you know, unreal experience for myself, but just looking at her. So, you know, I give it up to all the mums out there, man. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a mm-hmm. tough job, but uh, I uh, like doing time with him. He's he's uh, two now. His name is um, Isaiah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's really naughty. Eh? He knows he is. So, you know. <laughs> Just yeah, like his dad. Flick in the ear <laughs> now and then. I enjoy that. So. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I, one of my weird, like, I one of the things I love doing is, like, scrolling through. I have a guilty pleasure of scrolling through TikTok and watching little kids, like, toddler age, do things that they shouldn't do and or say things that they should <laughs> not say. And... Uh, yeah animal or pet videos are my like guilty pleasure just to get like some joy right like those yeah. moments where a parent is like frustrated but what their kid does is so funny that you're like number one it's funny but i also kind of have to discipline this because it's not necessarily yeah. appropriate but like how do you do that with a straight face yeah no it wouldn't be easy no that's for sure we won't have that experience but we i have a little sister who's five yeah we have a niece that's five i taught preschool for years so i got to work with the oh. little kids a lot and they were like <laughs> They were like, the, it was like the best. I was like, this is yeah. fantastic. And if my body would have like been able to bend over that far anymore, then I probably would keep going. <laughs> Kate's tall. So bending over for little ones is a little yeah. bit hard for, you know, for it was her. tricky, but yeah, now I teach fourth graders and it's kind of the same thing some of the time. So yeah, 10 yeah. to they're similar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the behaviors. Yeah, true. All right. Well, we're approaching the holidays. The holiday season mm-hmm. so do you and your families have specific or favorite holiday traditions that you take part in no i mean we we don't so back back home in south africa we 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 used to have christmas on the farm we'd have about 50 40 people back back on the farm that would for family wow. that would for christmas um and it's just a lot different you know now in december it's it's approaching like midsummer so it's extremely hot there whereas this side it's you know we've had snow the last couple of weeks um, yeah so we're actually going to take a trip out to i think it's leavenworth uh-huh uh, yep. oh, yeah. yeah so we're going to go out there everyone's mentioned to us that it's a really good place to go and visit so my in-laws are out at the moment so we're going to go out for for three or four days out there with the kids and see the lights but yeah other than that it's just a you know a special family day and opening presents and eating together yeah yeah. They have a they have a great reindeer farm out in Leavenworth. You can go see reindeer. Oh, really? So yeah. I would yeah. definitely look that up. Reindeer farms, a couple sleigh rides, super fun for the, the little kids. Love meeting the reindeer. Yeah, you so. can like feed them their right. little pellets and stuff. It's, it's actually a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, quite excited for that. But otherwise, yeah, we not not really any traditions or it's just a, a super special day. You know, get the family together and works. You know, it's a holiday, so it's just special mm-hmm. spending time together as a family. That's yeah, awesome. we're, we're pretty much the same. Yeah. Just a big lunch on uh, Christmas Day. 
just watch all the kids open their presents while you have nothing nothing so you know it's it's pretty yeah. special yeah <laughs> that's I pretty know. much it just eat and then uh cry the next day because you have to go for a run <laughs> <laughs> back to preseason yep. yeah yeah i know once there's little kids around for christmas it always makes it so fun to just kind of see that experience like through their eyes and like how they're how they're enjoying it so that's that's always good when you can get the little kids yeah. around you yeah mm -hmm. um for sure so that's interesting that you just mentioned how so basically the holidays happen christmas happens and then all of a sudden you're in preseason mode yeah so you guys start diving into workout sessions is it like pretty intense december 26th yeah. it happens <laughs> i mean i think jay jay's been here at the Seawolves before before me some it's it's going to be my first preseason so i'm not exactly sure how it's structured but i think jay you you were here last year weren't you bro yeah it's um well, that's not not too bad. It's just a lot of um, a lot of running, and uh, just a normal gym program. So I think it's more running, just because everyone's because we've had what six months off. Yeah. Mm. Some of the boys and um, yeah, but it's a short preseason too, so it's pretty tough to try and get yeah. everything done in like a month or two. So yeah, and the, and the weather uh, this time of. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's one of the main factors. The weather yeah. is, yeah. yeah. I mean, we we're really grateful. We got that. We got an indoor facility at Starfire, so that does help. Mm -hmm. Some of the times it's actually it's, good because know, it's a lot smaller too. Yeah, so you can't run further. In the, in the indoor. <laughs> Just back and forth. Hopefully, it snows yeah. when it's uh, when it's busy. So. <laughs> but I see yeah, it's not having a worse. Man, burn like. the lungs a little bit, right? Like that cold air Ooh. running too Ooh. long. Yeah. I remember softball. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, this year's preseason was tough. Just walk, yeah. walking outside was freaking. Yeah. Sort of yeah the weather, the, the weather plays a huge part. I mean, and it rains. It rains a lot, so that's also. Mm -hmm. But I guess I don't know. You you guys have been here for a long time. Do you get used to this weather or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I th I think like this year has been a lot less rain yeah. than normal. Like, oh, okay. bad news, man. Sorry. Sorry it's to usually, tell you that. It's like, it was like the driest, <laughs> warmest fall. We were all like, what is, like, we'll take it, but like, what What's is happening? happening? So, yeah, usually it rains <clears throat> way more than that. But, oh, um, yeah. but it's, you know, it's more of like, it's not just constant downpour. It's just like a little bit of rain here, a little bit of rain there kind of thing. But it, it just kind of adds up. You kind of get used to it. The, the one thing I would say that you you don't necessarily get used to is how dark it gets in the winters yeah. like early mm, you know like i was yeah. just telling kate this last week like it's like 4 30 being home from work black. being sick and yeah. stuff and it's like it's gloomy out it's dark by 4 30 yeah. yeah what is like my whole life that's still <laughs> i love this time yeah. of year i love the holiday season i just would love sunshine until about nine o'clock at night. I love that. I'd go for yeah. like seven. We could go for like seven. <laughs> we'll and then you could have Christmas. Well, I mean, or something. So, so when my family and I got out here, we also, you know, we questioned the weather and if it was the right decision coming out here. <laughs> and everyone mentioned to us, wait until spring and wait until summer. And, you yeah. know, we had the most summer. incredible summer here this year. And mm -hmm. it's, it's honestly a different, it, it feels like a different place. I mean, it seems like no one works and everyone just enjoys life. Um, yep. Yeah. The, the parks come yeah, alive, and then, you know, it's awesome. And it's the lake yeah. is full. Like everywhere in the lake is full. Oh you yeah. Know, like barbecuing on the yeah, everywhere. The yeah. Yep. So there's also, I mean, that was super. You know, super cool to experience. It's like a completely different place. Mm -hmm. It is really nice in the summer. Yeah. It's like we mm. we we st everybody stays here because of what it's like in because of the summer, yeah. yeah and it's like you you make it through you don't winter you don't <laughs> on you, purpose. you don't waste that opportunity as a as somebody that lives in the pacific northwest you're like this is we have about two three months yeah. of the year we're not going anywhere this is the time of year where we <laughs> will be here yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah for sure um so okay let's talk a little bit more about um the two of you as a rugby players so what has the journey been like for you to become a professional rugby player and and now end up in the MLR? Uh, you go first, Dave. Oh, so I go. Um, yeah, so I, I grew up in South Africa. Um, rugby is a really big sport. There, it's probably one of the mm -hmm. uh, top three, you know, probably top three sports in South Africa. 
Um, and I grew up with a twin brother, Jesse, and a younger mm -hmm. brother, Matt. And brother. yeah, so, I mean, from 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 early early days, we played rugby when we got back from school. You know, in the garden, um, we played mm -hmm. rugby at school together. Um, and I mean, yeah, then we got to high school and we got approached by a professional team that in for after high school. And that's sort of our journey started. I mean, rugby is, yeah, it's just everywhere in South Africa. And it's, yeah, hopefully it'll be like that um, here in the States in the next couple of years. Yeah, mm. that would be yeah. wonderful. AJ, what about you? Um, I was born in Samoa, um, then moved to, to New Zealand when I was uh, really young. I think I was like nine or 10. But I, I didn't start rugby until I was in, um, in high school. Mm. Like I never played juniors. Um, I, I don't know. I think I wasn't allowed to or something. But <laughs> <laughs> just, you just didn't play juniors at all. You were drumming. Yes, yeah. you were drumming. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I didn't play until I was in uh, in high school. Straight out of high school, played club rugby, and then it wasn't until I moved to Australia, 2016, mm. where I kind of took it serious. Um, I was down in Perth, Western Australia played club footy there, then didn't quite work as I wanted. Then I moved to Brisbane, uh, played club footy here in Brisbane. And uh, it's actually where my wife's from. So I came and stayed with her. And then, uh, yeah, uh, Perth, the professional team there, Western Force um, got in touch and said they wanted to, to sign me there. So that was my first proper pro contract was with the Western Force. and. Uh, that I was there for three years mm. and then um, yeah came up here in Brisbane uh, when that door closed chilled here for a year played rugby and then the Seattle door opened so it was yeah been... you've been wonderful here in Seattle I mean yeah mm -hmm. I don't know how you make those kicks no ah, it's just it's the it's, angle a, I don't understand the, the angles and the, the distance angles. I just I don't like yeah. I just keep thinking to myself like how actually a trick to it oh you just you look at the post and then just close your eyes and close oh, your yes. eyes 100 yeah. i thought I, I thought you would be closing you your eyes to god <laughs> you know pray to god <laughs> <laughs> i uh close your eyes and pray i can imagine that even if i did that amazing trick it would not work out for me <laughs> that's an, it's 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 yeah. been really fun to to um to watch some of those, some of those plays, especially those kicks. It's just like, holy cow. Yeah. It's incredibly impressive. Like mm -hmm. I've been impressed every time. Um, is there a specific moment as you've like kind of grown to play rugby or you watched rugby growing up or anything like that, that you like that you can remember is when you fell in love with rugby, like as a sport, is there a moment for you where you're like, this is something I want to do like professionally? Or is it just that it like was part of your like it just ended up being part of who you were like? No, I think I think at, at in South Africa at high school rugby's you know like I mentioned it's a really big sport. Um, so when the first team plays, the whole entire school you know dresses up into their blazers and their we call it number ones like your formal sort of mm. uh, uniform. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was I think fifteen or sixteen, um, you know we had. We were playing a few games before the first team and, you know, quite a lot of the, the school were joining onto the stands and, you know, waiting for the first team to play. And, you know, I just thought to myself when we were watching the first team, imagine playing, in, you know, in front of a big crowd like this. It's quite a special thing. You know, everyone's there to watch you play. And, yeah, I mean, fast forward a couple of years down the line, we ended up playing for our first side at school and we played in front of the school and it was just an awesome, awesome feel, feeling. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's the that's probably the the time for me that I you know really realized that I I, I wanted to play rugby professionally. That's amazing. <clears throat> um, for me, it was I wasn't really good at well, I wasn't good in school, so <laughs> 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 so rugby was the only kind of option for me out of school. You know, we mm. started working and trained at the same time, and I think when I got there, going to um, the trainings, you know, to, to play with my friends at a young age, you know, just to um, just to kill time, you know, on a Tuesday and Thursday night, and then come Saturdays, just to, to see the joy in the boys when, like, when we come away with a win, or mm. you know, when we lose, how different you know the boys are, 
mm-hmm. and these are lost. So I think that kind of, you know, and I wasn't good at school, so it's either rugby or go to work. So I think that kind of motivated me to, <laughs> to, to become mean, yeah. a, uh, a professional rugby player. Yeah. So, yeah I, uh, I work at a high school for my full-time job. I'm a college prep advisor and I'd go out during lunchtime. Kids can kind of hang out in the courtyard mm-hmm. and talk, chill with their friends. But there's been a group of um, young guys that had a rugby ball and they were tossing it around. And I was like, we had gotten into rugby last, you know, last year. And I saw them doing it last year. And I was like, I haven't seen kids playing with a rugby ball around yeah. here. And so it kind of, it really excited me. And so I talked to them a little bit about it and they're like, oh yeah, we just like tossing it around. They'd kick it around a little bit in the courtyard. And so the next time I went to a rugby match with the, uh, to watch the Seawolves, I picked them up a Seawolves like replica ball and I gave it to them. The next time I saw them out in the courtyard, I was like, hey, it looks like you guys could use another one, you know? So that was a really cool moment. Just kind of like, Hopefully, you know, encouraging them to continue to play a sport that they seem to enjoy on their free time. It's their lunch. They got 30 minutes to kick it with their friends, and that's mm-hmm. what they're doing. So, well, I guess, um, yeah, I guess that's how it starts, you know. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just a rugby ball, and you might not have, you know, any idea about it. But then you watch a rugby game and you see, you know, professional athletes playing rugby with the same ball that you throw around and kick around. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, I mean, I guess yeah. that's, that starts in the backyard. Um, and as long as you're having fun, that's the main thing. 100%. Yeah. 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 I just, I mean, we've, like we said, we've really enjoyed going to the games, but for those out there that might be listening or watching, um, for those people who haven't gotten into rugby yet or haven't, you know, made it out to a match, like what would be your like sales pitch of why folks should come out to see rugby and maybe the Seawolves specifically this upcoming season? (laughs) You're so polite to um, It's like, do you want to go? Do you want to go? Um, well, I think, first of all, you know, it's like we mentioned, it's a brand new sport to America. And it's, I mean, it's it's difficult to bring a new sport into, you know, a country so big like the States. But, you know, my like my challenge to people out there, you know, that watch this podcast, you know, get, get a bit out of your comfort zone and come and watch a new sport. Because I guarantee you that, you know, every single person that's gone, gone to a game that hasn't watched it, fallen in love with it, and they want to learn more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's also just our fan base that's really, really incredible. I mean, I've played in yeah. South Africa for the last 10, 12 years, 11 years, um, at three different pro- uh, professional rugby teams. And we also had good, you know, good, great support there. But I mean, the support here is unreal. I mean, you know, fans travel across the country to the East Coast to come and watch a game. And it's mm-hmm. just, it's special, you know, yeah, it's, it's, pretty hard to, to, it's pretty hard to explain on here. Um, but yeah, I just challenge everyone that watches the podcast, and you know, if the two of you get to speak to friends, challenge them to come out. And yeah, yeah, yeah. they're coming. We brought we, our we brought we some like, people last year. Oh yeah, we liked whenever people talk. I'm like, oh my gosh, and then rugby, you guys like rugby. <laughs> like it's just yeah, the, that's my, my the fans my... here are crazy, man. Like hmm. I remember my first year, um, the the boys that uh, like the season wasn't going too well for us. I think we were losing like seven or five games straight. Mm-hmm. And like the Knicks, and there was a lot of away games at that time when I when I came, and then the first home game back, like it was, there was heaps of people at the stadium. You know, everyone's like cheering us on, and then well, we lost that game, and then we had another home game the next week, and you know they they still showed up, so mm-hmm. it was pretty crazy. You know, like back in well, in New Zealand or Australia, you know, you lose three games straight. You got no one in the seats, yeah. no one in the stands. Yeah. Just oh, your wow. parents or your loved ones. And you see your families on the stands. So uh, I think it's pretty um like the, the fan base is just crazy in, in Seattle. How would you say there's that a impact? lot of people like that today as well, or like this year as well, like coming yeah. off the field and there was a lot of like people are, oh, you know, this our first game yeah. you know, coming to watch the, the rugby and it's like it was they were asking me about the kicks as well, and I was just like, Oh, <laughs> how do you think because they've never it, seen it before so yeah like, oh. yeah yeah mm. does it impact your guys's mental health when you see like people still showing up after having a struggle like of yeah. like losing some games in a row like how what's the difference for you guys mentally mm. when you see that you still have support after you've lost a game compared to like feeling like you've been in a situation where maybe the support dwindled if you were struggling as a team 
Yeah, I think I think it's huge. You know, I mean, I think from the outside, rugby, you know, being a professional rugby player looks it looks pretty and it looks cool. And I mean, you know, it's I guess it's like anything in life. You have good times. That's you know, when you're on your high and everything's going well, and mm-hmm. then you have bad times where you you know you're really down. But you know, fortunate enough, we're in a team environment, so we are able to speak to one another and speak to to mm-hmm. family and. But yeah, having having fans come out week in week out is definitely a, a huge plus. I mean, it's yeah. it's special. It is special. I mean, and you don't get it in a lot of places in the world with rugby. So yeah. Well, I'm glad the the Sea Wolves fans are showing up. And Seattle has like great sports fans. I mean, like they're loud. They're passionate. They're you know, they just it's 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 different like we've talked about this before i'm kind of new into sports because michaela loved sports and i was like well i guess i'm gonna have to like watch sports so i can hang out with her and so um you know because like otherwise i'd never see her so um so that's one of the things is like when we watch stuff on tv like other games and we've watched when the sea wolves have played away like we've tried, watched you know, on, we've TV, watched and on tv and stuff mm. and you just watch the fans and you're like no one's like making any noise. Like no one's standing up. Yeah. No one's cheering. You're yeah. just like, what? That's like it's just such a different. Seattle's just yeah. such a different sport yeah. fan atmosphere. So yeah, we're certainly lucky in that aspect. I mean, the fans are great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. So I have a question because the league's looking a little different shifting this season. A it's shifting. So with the Gilgronies and the Giltinis out of the MLR this season. Yeah. And welcoming of the Chicago ha- Hounds. How do you feel like this will shake up the league with that transition? I think it's like it, it's good. There's a new team, especially mm-hmm. when two teams are out of the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I've seen um the the Gilgronis old coach. He's the the head coach for the mm-hmm. for that team. So I reckon it's yeah. pretty good for the league. Good. Some, I've seen they they signed some good players as well. So. So it's going to be a yeah. game to come and watch, is what you're, if you know. Yeah, playing, I playing I'll, I'll the you got to you got to put them in their place, though. It's their first season. You got to yeah. show them what's up. Welcome yeah. them to the league with the, you know, <laughs> hand them an L. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think it's really good. You know, it's always exciting when there's new teams joining the league. I mean, it's yeah. only been my first year. It's it's then again, it's really sad to see the Gilgronis and yeah. Goltinis, you know, sort of being disqualified and leaving the league. Um, I mean, they were both great teams, and you yeah. Know, yeah. Always a challenge playing against them, um, but yeah, uh, we you know we don't know the legalities and everything going on behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. so that, yeah. that's someone else's job. But yeah, like I said, great having a new team on on uh, within the league, mm-hmm. and yeah, definitely think it'll be a game to watch. Definitely, yeah. and it's it's even back out with the number of teams. It's like an even number of teams again. So mm-hmm. that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I think we play um we play each team once. Eh? But then a couple of teams mm. plus, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually not too sure. Which I mean, pretty cool. But I think the East Coast and the West Coast is now sort of balanced out, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it looks like um, the Sea Wolves play Chicago at home here on like mm. May 20th. So, oh, there we go. So, both of you will be knowing the schedule. I'm, I don't know that. She I'm says just, she's learning sports, but she has stuff things, memorized. No, I'm not. I'm not memorizing things. I just, I just, you know, see things sometimes. Just show up on my screen. She's a holder of knowledge. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, so um, it's going to be, awesome. I, it's a good, I'm, I'm excited about the season. And so, um, you know, last year on our podcast, our first Seawolf we had on was Brad Tucker, who's now over with yeah. New York, yeah. who, um, which is fine. Um, but, you know, that was kind of a big, that was kind of a big like championship situation um with them and it seems like i i want to say your first regular season match right is up against rugby new york now that yeah, yes. and I, think, I think we played home too if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. yeah. Stuff, yeah. i think looks like uh, i think february 18th so God, there you go. okay she it's literally like, that's know. not it's even just, written down it's like it's i don't know thing, i don't match magic, she magic every day, happens i don't know it's not me but um but yeah so since the Sea Wolves, you know that last championship game, um, and you know we've, you, we, I say we like I'm involved, and the team has won the, <laughs> won the shield twice so far. Um, how like, what do you think the Sea Wolves need to focus on this season to be able to find themselves back at that championship game and like hopefully celebrating a victory with bringing the shield back to Seattle? 
I know it's early, but what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I don't think much much needs to change. You know, I mean, I think we we had the right systems in place last year. I mean, if we didn't and we didn't get to the finals, then I think maybe it'd be a good good thing to reflect on. But I think uh, Clarkie and Valenesi, the coaches, they've got a really good system running and a good you know plans in place, and there's a good mixture between senior players and young play, younger exciting players, which is yeah. which is really exciting. So. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think much has to change. I, I just think we need to focus on us. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, just just do us and focus on yeah, focus on us and the team. I like yeah. it. Yeah. So when you say like systems in place, I assume that's just like what the game plan is going into battling your opponent kind of situation. Do those game plans change much per when you face different opponents, or is it? Do yeah. you try to be consistent with what you do? Week to week. No, so, no, so they change weekly. I mean, we'll have different strategies against different teams, whether it's attack or defense or, you know, a kicking game. Yeah, so those are changing weekly in season. Good to know. I, I mean, strategies have yeah. to change, but it's interesting yeah. to yeah. know, like, what kind of consistency yeah. is out there in regards to that. Um, so we talked a little bit already about the fans. Why do you <clears throat> think rugby so well, something we've noticed is how like personal i feel like rugby is for the fan it's experience so great you guys once you're done with a match you're coming down the line you're shaking hands you're taking photos you're greeting those people autographs it feels different than other like professional sporting events mm -hmm. it feels a lot more like something that we really loved was how close you felt to the game and how easy it was to feel like you could connect with you as players yes. on the pitch. Starfire doesn't have like a lot of barrier to keep yeah. to separate There's no space the from the field out, to the stands. Right? It's like you're on top of the field. Yeah. 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 So and so for for as a fan perspective, like you really feel so much more connected. Like if you go to Lumen Field to watch games and stuff, it's great. But you're yeah. so far removed far away from action yeah. from everything. Um so how do you think I'm just gonna yeah, kind of try go to it. go back to what you were saying there since I kind of took it. But like, so how do you how do you think that kind of closeness or connection or that nearness, I guess, of the fans to the sport, like how does that impact um how does that impact you as players and during the game and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think it's great having the fans so close to the, you know, so close to the field. I mean, like you mentioned, it's more exciting. You're you're right there by the action. Yeah, and my wife actually said to me, "We've been married for seven years next uh, next year," and she said to me, "You know, for the first time watching rugby, that she didn't realize that it was such a like crazy collision sport." I'm like, yeah. "What? I've known you for 12, 13 years, and this is the first time." Because she said, "Sitting so close to the field, you actually feel like the impact, and you're out there, yeah. you're sort of in the game, you know." You can um, hear and you hear you everything. Hear it. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's great. I mean, it's Hopefully you know, and it, it gives. Yeah, and it keeps the fans sort of in the game as well, you know. And it, it's definitely a huge plus for, for us as the players playing the game. Um, I mean, you hear that you hear everyone shouting on the sides, and it's like it's never still. It's great. I just love yelling seawall. Oh yeah, it's so great <laughs> as loud as we can. It's so and and like Michaela, you know, whenever we go, you have tickets obviously that like tell you where you're sitting. But she's like, I want to go and like stand up and what. So we always end up like traveling to the different like anywhere where you guys can score a try score, yeah. that's where i'm at we're like back over yeah. there like what you know all that kind of stuff so it's 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 pretty fun are other rugby stadiums like that where the fans are like right there like they're in starfire or is it like they're more separated out usually yeah. there's, there's a few in the in australia big um i know there's one in sydney it's a new one where it's like pretty much like like starfire yeah but the, the other ones in the league, I don't, I don't think any, any of their, anywhere is close to, to Starfire. Mm -hmm. I, fr yeah. I freaking love it. I love it so much. It is cool. It's nice. It is really cool. It's why people should show up if they have never been to a rugby yeah. match. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a whole experience. That's for sure. And yeah. they have like they have snacks there, so that's helpful. Yeah. Snacks. Who doesn't look? Then, you know, then getting back to getting back to like you know with the players being able to interact with fans and stuff yeah. after the game, like that's a huge, yeah. a huge thing that you know us as a team, Clarky, Valenesi, you know the entire management, we 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 do put a lot of effort into because it's a community thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
we just the rugby players and if it wasn't for you guys the seattle seawolves wouldn't be able to you know it wouldn't exist um so that is something that we do take pride in and that we love doing and spending time with fans and having a beer after the game or taking a photo i mean that's you know clarky clarky mentioned one of the fans said that's sport at its essence you know and mm -hmm. it really is i mean the interaction between fans and players and yeah so it's, so it's just a regular thing in general like you go to watch rugby anywhere in the world, like straight after the game, you'll see rugby guys. Like, I don't know, growing up, you know, playing in the club, straight after the game, you'll go talk to the supporters because yeah. if, if it wasn't for them, they wouldn't, you know, no one would be watching the game. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah, I've always done that. Yeah. It just feels like it's, there's something so about it that feels, like, it, it feels so, like, respectful slash like it's welcoming it's welcoming it's great hospitality is the word yeah. for it like it just feels like you guys genuinely care about the fan base too like we care about you guys we want to see you guys succeed on the pitch we want you guys to find wins and if that's not the case then we're still wanting to just lift you guys up and it it offers us the opportunity to do that too yeah which is i think part of what makes people just continue to show up regardless of the win and loss column you know yeah so well it'll um, only get better it'll only get better going forward so i'm glad we're doing i'm glad we're doing something right yes absolutely absolutely so okay we'll kind of like we get to sort of on our final questions here so what advice would both of you give to the next generation of rugby players those kids who are out there tossing that ball around or trying to figure out what this sport's all about, what would you tell them? Well, I mean, I would, I would say, you know, number one thing is always have fun. Um, you know, it's mm. not just as a, as a professional sportsman, but I mean, anything in life that you're doing, if you're not enjoying it, then, you know, look for something else mm. and, you know, just enjoy the process. I mean, I think a lot of people try and rush things and try to become something that they aren't sort of overnight. Um, so enjoy the good times, enjoy the bad times. Um, you know, I'm, we're really fortunate as rugby players, we get to travel, you know, this year, last season, we've traveled East Coast, you know, all over the West Coast. So, um, yeah, just enjoy the process and, you know, take all the memories you can with you because, I mean, that's all that we have at the end of the day, I guess. Yeah. Um, I reckon my advice would be to, to back yourself, you know. Mm. Um if you, if you want to be like you know whatever position you play and you feel like at times you doubt yourself that you won't make it or you can't do it just you know just back yourself to do it you know if it doesn't doesn't happen like dan said just be patient because mm. you know I, I truly believe in hard work pays off so um yeah just back yourself and believe in yourself i think that's something that you know for me growing up was you know, doubting myself at times. So, mm. Mm -hmm. What or who helped you, or even within yourself, helped you get beyond those moments? Was it people around you, or did you find something internally that continued to push your, like, how did you push yourself through that? I think it's definitely the people around you, like, surround yourself with good people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but yeah, I think it's, uh mainly my wife you know my family mm -hmm. um my wife and, and my son yeah it's like having a why and then remembering what that why is mm. for right like yeah. if you can't show up to the pitch and have and know that your why like your why and why you're supposed to be out there and why you're playing then it i like you got to be passionate out there right like to keep yourself yeah. safe on the pitch don't you yeah. like you have to be able to be fully in it just to even keep your body safe um yeah. i almost played rugby <laughs> at wsu they tried to recruit me and i was like my body will break in two seconds i know myself well enough i was an athlete in high school softball if i slided the wrong way i was great but if i slided the wrong way yeah i was broken for a little bit so i was like <laughs> would break me um carly mckinnon actually uh was the one to sh we went to wsu and we both roomed together for our orientation and we somehow connected through like social media, Twitter, I think yeah. through, through Twitter. And, um, 
I was like, funny. oh, wait, we roomed together at WSU. And she's like, we were almost like rugby teammates. But I was like, I definitely didn't play. So. <laughs> um, now I'm curious, like, had I played, what would have transpired? Oh yeah, Probably a broken body. But <laughs> There's risks to any sport, right? It's true. It's so. true. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Awesome. It's pretty good. Well, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us yes. tonight, for taking time out of your evening and from your families to talk with us about rugby and to let our mm-hmm. listeners know more about who you are as people. Yeah. And then also why you love this sport and why they should come out and watch. Definitely. Um, and, you know, uh, Seawolves have season tickets available. They have like half season packages yep. available as yep. well right now. Makes a great yep. Christmas gift. Totally affordable. Probably the best priced. Like tickets, season tickets you can you find can get. around. Um, we have season tickets, so we'll be there. I mean, broccoli guy will be there. Usually he is. Okay. DJ Trunks probably will be there. Also fantastic. And our BFF, um, Rocky. Rocky. You know I. He's love, legit. Our you BFF. Know you have Rocky. no idea, Rocky. Yeah. This no, he's a champ. He's a champ. I'm scared of him. Yeah. <laughs> is I? He's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> he's one. He's just make him take a photo of him, but he. It's the big, vibes. it's the big muscles. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know I do want to see Rocky stand next to DK Metcalf. I mean, they're, I mean, their muscles, their comp, the thighs alone on that would be an interesting comparison. <laughs> so, I don't know that DK's thighs are that big. I don't know. Rocky's. Are I huge, think he skips leg so. day compared to Rocky. So <laughs> don't tell DK Metcalf. I said Ru- that Rucky's an orca always in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we again appreciate you guys hopping on the show. Yes. We're really excited to drop this episode and uh, we hope you have a happy holiday season. And Uh, you too, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Mm. Thanks for having us. And we really look forward to seeing all of you and your your followers on the podcast to come out and watch. That's right. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thank you.